Hi, third graders. Um, we're gonna get started on a new project. Um, the project that we're gonna work on this time is based on a book probably that you've read or a series of books. Um, so our title is Magic Sunglasses and it's based on the books of Pete the Cat and his Magic Sunglasses by the author James Dean. I did include the video if you uh, wanna take the time and enjoy the story. You'll also notice that the illustrations are our inspiration for the style that we're drawing in this time. So let's take a look at uh, the slide stack and start moving through it. And it says um, on our project details that today I will learn about space so that I can over use overlapping to create depth. That's the beginning of perspective. And as you're getting older, you're starting to realize that things closer to you are larger and things farther away from you are smaller. And we're gonna use those ideas in our drawing today. Um, our drawing is very much based on a cartoon style. So you changing the style to meet your own type of cartooning is fine with me. We're gonna use the illustrator style and the example and what I use to draw from. But again, you can change the style and do something that's more personal to you. Uh, we're basically gonna use our basic drawing paper, a pencil. I'm gonna recommend for this project uh, a technique of using markers and some water to create more of a watercolor painting look. Um, if you have markers and water, great, go ahead and use them. Obviously you'll need a toothbrush, I'm sorry, a paintbrush or a Q-tip or possibly um, you will use just paint if you have that. So again, use the supplies that you have, make any adjustments that you need to. Um, it's fine with me if it doesn't exactly match the example. As we move along our slide stack, you're gonna notice that it talks about space and it says the area between and around objects. It can also refer to the feeling of depth. That's that illusion of 3D that we magic artists can create on our paper. We can create the look of something happening foreground, middle ground, background. Um, real space is three dimensional, dimensional and visual art we create that illusion um, and we call it space. So as you're looking at that slide, you're gonna see the example of the cactus along the road and the cactus gets smaller the farther away that it gets. Moving along on our slide stack, it says about, it, it talks about drawing Pete from the story and his friends. Um, you can choose Pete the cat or you can choose one of the other friends that are included. The drawing handouts are all included in the slide stack. Um, towards the end are the additional characters. So as we move, you're gonna see the slide stack that talks about how to draw Pete the cat. Um, so we'll get started doing that today and I'm gonna use that as my example. We have our paper of straight up and down or it's the vertical um, direction on our paper and it talks about drawing the oval for the sunglasses kind of in the middle of the paper because remember you need to have the cat's ears above it and then a little bit of the cat's body below. So ovals are that kind of uh, a smash circle. Do the best you can to make two ovals about the same size. That's the lenses of the sunglasses. And then we slowly make our pencil work for us in the way that we want it draw an oval around that so that we have the lenses and the glass frame. I think that's the easiest way to do it. I think it's easier to start out with the full oval and then draw the frame around it. It's just copying that shape, the little piece that goes in between them, and then the other shape. Um, of the lenses. Moving on on the drawing guide, it talks about drawing the cat's ears, which go up. I always think of them as a mountain, across, another mountain, and down. So there's the cat's uh, top of his head, and then we just have a little line segment, and then toward the center, which gives us uh, direction for the cat's chin, or the bottom of the cat, and then the cat's body. Pretty simplified. That's why I think these projects were great. Um, and then uh, to finish adding the rest of the details to the cat, of course, we know a cat has a, I say, a triangle shape for its nose. Another characteristic of a cat that's, uh, I would say, essential are whiskers. That kind of makes it definitely a cat. And then I'm gonna wait to color in the lenses of the sunglasses for a few minutes. Also, we're gonna remember that part of this lesson was creating that depth, so we need to create a background behind the cat. Um, you can place the cat wherever you would like. Here's the horizon line. I'm gonna have this be green ground or the earth. Um, I'm gonna create kind of a house back here because my cat is going to be outside. I need just simplified lines and shapes to draw what you know or recognize as a house. 
There's its roof. Over here, I'm gonna draw a very simplified tree. Again, it's in cartoon mode, so I can go ahead and give it that stick in that bubbly uh, line. Again, it looks a bit like popcorn. So that's a simplified background. Those things are farther away, so they're smaller. They're behind the cat, so that overlapping happens. Next, I'm gonna use a black crayon, and I'm gonna do some outlining so that I can create those heavy lines that will still remain even after I use the marker for that marker technique. So you will press hmm, firmly with your black crayon, go over all the lines that you like. Notice how I had that extra line over there. I just didn't go over it with my uh, black crayon. I'm using a dark heavy line, very cartoon-like, which is great. It goes along with the theme or the style of the art that we've created today. And I'm just doing the outline of every, uh, or going over the line that I created for each and every one of them. Let's get the sunglasses next. Like I said, the drawing guides are included if you're gonna do one of the other characters from the story. Um, I think there's a frog and what is the third character? I'm concentrating on this. I'm not able to do the, both things at once. So hold on a second. There, my black lines are all complete. Um, let's see here. There, oh yeah, there's the grumpy toad and then the squirrel. So let me fast forward here and explain a little bit about the coloring technique. Um, what you have are markers, and we're gonna use them in a way that makes them look a little more paint-like. I'm just gonna work over here on the tree. Notice how I'm using just some uh, a few lines. I'm not coloring solid. I'm able to uh, give it some texture and some direction with my lines to make it a little more interesting. And then let me show you the technique that I wanted to, for you, to share with you if you wanna do the whole project. Look at how I can leave some grass texture lines and it will make it a little more interesting. You, of course, should finish your entire project, step one, using all the marker before you move on to the technique of using the water. I'm only uh, doing a section because, do you notice how it makes the camera jiggle? I think you would get tired of watching that jiggly camera if I did my whole entire drawing. Now I'm just simply using a regular paintbrush and I just have plain water on it. We're gonna activate the ink that is in that um, marker and it creates more of a paint look. So again, all I'm using, I cleaned it because now I'm gonna use some of the water to activate the ink that's in the green marker and doesn't it look very much like a watercolor painting. Be careful with the amount of water you use. Your paper um, doesn't, doesn't like to get super saturated, super wet because then it becomes, um, more able to tear. So control the amount of water you're using, control where you're putting the water, and you'll be able to create a drawing and then turn it into a painting by using that technique. Hopefully you'll enjoy this. Uh, I expect to see you do a great job. I expect to see some um, hopefully fun cartoons uploaded and uh, have a great week and we'll see you soon.